Let's take a look at the depth of field improvements in Krakatoa MX 2.6. Here we have a PAT source which turns each vertex of a plane to a particle. We have 50 by 100 segments and we'll hide this plane. And uh, if we take a look at the camera, the manipulate mode automatically enables itself so we can see that the focal depth is animated. If we go and uh, render the current frame with just the vertices of the plane, we are getting very small points. And if we enable the depth of field effect and render, we barely see anything. So in order to boost a little bit the visibility of these particles, we'll enable uh, 100 copies in a radius of 0 0.2 using a PT cloner. When we render this, we're getting much larger, much more visible depth of field circles of confusion. Here is the points without depth of field and the points with depth of field. Let's go to frame 85 and render again. And in this case, uh, the center is in focus and the rest is falling off uh, on the side. And we can select the camera and take a look at the anamorphic squeeze option. Set to 0 0.5 is going to squeeze the samples horizontally and we can adjust it, we can even animate it uh, in order to squeeze along the other axis. Let's set it to 0 0.5 and we'll disable it for now. No, let's keep it on and uh, we'll take a look at the texture map which we can use to control the alpha which is the filter applied to the bulky effect. If we render now, we're going to get exactly the same shape as defined by the alpha channel coming from the bitmap. We can uh, go to frame 85 again and render. In this case, the central particles will be in focus and there will be a little bit less of a depth of field effect on the left and on the right. We can switch to RGB and uh, render with blend RGB set to 100%. So all the colors coming from the texture will be applied to the particles. And when we do this, we see that there is an abrupt switch between particles, which are using a MIP map, a size of one and size of two by two or higher. We can shift the uh, sample that is being used depending on the size of the depth of field uh, circle of confusion. So uh, when we scale it to three, uh, the ones that were using one pixel size texture will be using now a much larger one, four by four or eight by eight, if we keep on increasing the values. This uh, gets rid of the uh, problem and now we can switch back to the uh, hexagon using uh, only the alpha and uh, multiplied by an RGB uh, gradient ramp. When we do this, our rainbow colors will be going horizontally. And uh, when we zoom in, we see left is red and the middle is green and blue on the right. If we want to control the blending of the RGB, using a dedicated channel, we can do this. In this case, we'll use a global override because all the particles in the scene should get this. We'll take the position world space, convert it to camera space. Then we can break out either only the X or the X and the Y. And uh, we'll switch using a max and an integer that controls uh, exposed as a list which one of the two will be used. We can take the magnitude, divide by a uh, fall off value, which is exposed as the RGB fall off in the UI. We'll take it to the power of an exponent. We'll clamp it between two values and output as the bokeh blend uh, influence. This is a special channel that has to be allocated by the renderer in order to control the amount of RGB tinting that will be applied. We'll click the allocation option and now we see that this channel will be allocated. What we're doing now are the horizontal version along the x-axis left and right and we'll see that there is a band of 
non-colorized samples in the middle and then it falls off to uh, fully tinted. We can uh, make this uh, transition much sharper by using a very large exponent. Now we'll see that there is a band of non-colorized um, circles of confusion and then uh, the rest is um, tinted. And when we switch to radial mode, we'll see a circle in the middle which has exactly the same behavior. We can change uh, the maximum value to 0 0.74 or 75 uh, in order to reduce the tinting of the particles that are outside of that circle. Let's set it to 75. And then we can set the minimum value to 0 0.33. So the circle in the middle will have 30% tinting and 75% outside of the circle. So it's almost invisible now. Let's reset this back to the default settings and we'll change the RGB fall off to 300 units. If we render now, we'll get a very large circle in the middle. And we'll use this uh, setup to render a little bit more. We have in this scene a bunch of PAT volumes created from extruded texts, which defined the Krakatoa text and the description that we saw in the splash in the beginning of this video. Let's set the depth of field sampling to only 0 0.01. This means that the particles will be drawn uh, mostly just once at a random position within the circle of confusion. And since we have 100 copies of each particle in the background, we're still going to get a relatively uh, plausible representation. We have 15 million particles to draw, so in order to speed up the preview, we can use this very low uh, depth of field sampling. And we get a result that gives us an idea what's where, but obviously uh, we see also the uh, colors uh, coming from the gradient. We can lock now the particles in the cache. And for example, we could swap the order of the colors going from blue to red in the gradient, but we can still use the particle cache and the lighting cache because all those colors are being applied at render time and they don't have to be stored in a channel. Only the bulky blend influence channel would potentially require that. Uh, here it takes only 10 seconds and we get an idea where is blue, where is red, and we get rather low quality in the background uh, particles. So we'll go to sampling rate of 0 0.1. That will give us a little bit slower rendering, but much nicer shaped hexagons in the background. Now we'll have to wait for those uh, 15 million particles to be redrawn from cache. And here it is, and those samples are slightly better. And it took only two times longer, 20 seconds instead of 10 seconds. We could go to sampling of one, which will take even longer. And we can switch to frame 85, and we don't have to even rebuild the caches because nothing changes over time, except for the camera, which is independent from the channels that are being cached and uh, the textures that are controlling the depth of field uh, tinting and so on, they are independent from the current time at this point. So we can render with the already pre-cached particles, but in this case, the middle particles will be in focus and left and right will get it out of focus. And this is the final result rendered in about 30 seconds with the depth of field sample of one. If we take a look at the splash of our video, this was rendered at a higher resolution, but with exactly the same settings.